<sighs> so, what do you say we go somewhere a little more secluded? I may be about to offer you the Helio of a lifetime. Hello everyone, this is Matt, and I'm here with Louise. Hi. Who's been playing Rage 2, which is at least as zany as a badger, dressed as Shakespeare, making a three cheese omelette. Drinking some kind of oat milk, <laughs> flat white. <laughs> it is, I mean, that's pretty zany. Only with guns. It, we're probably underselling it a little bit there. So uh, I think the first thing to get out of the way is, Rage 2, did you have to play the original Rage? No. The important thing about Rage 2 is that you don't have to have played the original Rage, which I think they were very much, um, Tim Willits from Ed was saying, you don't need to have played it. Not that many people did. It was great, but no one played it. So if you didn't know about Rage 2, it's Ed Software who make Doom and Avalanche who made Mad Max uh, have worked together on creating this wasteland. And the first thing to say is, I think the main thing that everyone thought about the original Rage was that it was very brown. It was, it was quite brown. There were a lot was, of brown games at that time, yeah. and that was the, one of the brownest of the brown it games. It was very brown. Mad Max, also very brown. But yes. Mad Max was great, because you had all that car combat and stuff. Super underrated game. So yeah. what Rage has done is you've got this sprawling wasteland. Of course, we're in another post-apocalypse. And so it's quite interesting, because your main character, Walker, who I'll say it's quite exciting, because you can play as both a male or female version of Walker, That's whose cool. parents were murdered by the big bad authority, and he or she is on rev- out for revenge kind of like Batman but with guns Batman in the desert with guns yeah that's so, so nothing like Batman nothing Not nothing like Batman many gargoyles to perch on or anything but yeah. anyway so you are in this <laughs> no gargoyles in the wasteland what is in the wasteland and what I was going to say is that you've got these incredible powers so you've got what's called nano traits and these have interesting effects like I could throw vortex grenades at people and one of the standard ones is dash so you can sort of dash in any direction to avoid bullets because there's lots of bullets in this particular wasteland Uh, and there was another one I can't remember quite the name of it but basically you run towards someone at speed and pulverize them Nice. Which is a lot of fun. A lot of these traits as well, they seem to, the game's quite playful with things like gravity. So it yes. kind of, it, you know, in, a, in a, the way that you want a game to be, it's like, ah, gravity, we're going to just sort of let you have fun with that. It's very much of the, because Eds are involved, the shooting is amazing. So you've got all these ridiculous guns, you've got these ridiculous powers. And what the game actually wants you to do is it wants you to roll them all together. So it wants you to dash and then shoot someone with a ridiculous gun that you then, with a, with a gravity extra power, you can then fire into the sky and then send the person <laughs> rocketing into the They're sky. They're already dead, Walker. Yeah, well, and then you're just throwing a vortex grenade to bring the rest of them, have them all swirling around the ceiling so they make great, um, mm. you know, great targets and for, again, for that's shooting. And again, that's really good at, of, yeah. of giving, sort of setting you up these amazing scenarios where, like, you, you go into a room, you know, like, these people are clustered together there so I can do yeah. this and it'll make me feel amazing. Well, and it also celebrates that because you actually activate what's called an overdrive mode which means that your guns are better, your powers last longer, your health is better, the guns, the enemies drop better weapons and all the, everything gets better. The more you kill, the faster you kill, the more inventive you are, the more rage likes you, which is nice. It I mean, that is cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's in this world that with the sort of anti-brown <laughs> nature of things, <laughs> they've sprayed neon paint pretty much everywhere you know all the enemies have ridiculous hair even the fact that when you make a waypoint on your map in this sprawling world which you you do a lot of there's this kind of neon treads in front of you that look a little bit like you're driving down Thor's Rainbow Road (laughs) you know it's (laughs) Rainbow Bridge it's definitely there's a there's a sense of there's colour in here don't worry guys there's colour and there's all these I wasn't playing in a particularly bright biome but um, there's all there's vegetation there's water there's all kinds of different places that you can visit so you're not just being bombarded with endless amounts of sand I think that's really important isn't it as well because like I know we get sort of we're so used as gamers to being in post-apocalypse and them all being quite same here but this seems like it's not only as it sounds throwing the colour and the life in there but it's giving you loads of you know, loads of stuff to do. You're not going to spend hours and hours just walking through like a sandy expanse no, of nothing. No, it's absolutely not miserable. It's not miserable. In fact, uh, the start of the, the bit that I played went into a city and the city was all sort of Blade Runner, high neons, you know, characters everywhere. And if you go up and speak to them, then they'll give you missions out in the world. It's a good way of sort of revealing what's on your map because the minute you accept one of these quests, it then appears on your map and it tells you how difficult it is, but it also tells you what it rewards you if you go and do it. So it gives you an, an impetus to head out and do things because you can upgrade all your powers and you can add new projects and you can basically treat yourself like a bit of a upgradable toy in the fact that it's just this cycle to get more and more stuff. 
So that's kind of what we're looking at then in terms of, so you're upgrading like the sort of, I guess, fairly limited amount of weapons that you've got rather yeah. than finding loads and loads of new ones? Like. Nope, lots of different ones out okay. there. There's loads of different weapons that you can unlock. So whether you want just your sort of standard machine gun type or whether you want something that's going to fire detonatable bombs that Ed you game. can... Shotgun. Ed Ed game. shotgun. Oh, massive shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of... It, it kind of... It celebrates everything about the fun bits of Ed Games. At, at no point are you going to run out of ammo. In fact, I was um, doing... <laughs> the anti-metro. It's the anti-metro. If you've heard us talking about that, it's the anti-metro. It just dishes out plenty of shotgun stuff. In fact, if anything, it will withhold maybe some ammo so that you switch out and you have fun and you find mm. new ways to new ways to play. It's very much got that quirk going on. I went on one of my story missions was going through something called Mutant Bash TV, where you have to Walker has to become this kind of celebrity in the wasteland, and what? in order to, uh, exactly what? Mutant Bash TV. I don't know how the people in the apocalypse like Super Smash TV, but yes. in raid. So literally, I was having to go through different. It reminded me of the Running Man. Can you had to go through these different rooms where all these awful creatures and different types of weapons, were, different types of enemies, were dropped in on you, and you just had to kill them all as fast as possible. Well, so, just give me that as a yeah, game. That's that amazing. It. That's it's, just a part of it. Yeah, and it? it's this kind of... It, it just celebrates their mechanics, hmm. really. It's just how it wraps those up. I mean, even when you uncover a new area on the map, there's certain things that you have to find there, which obviously, it kind of reminded me of Far Cry if you added a whole lot of drugs. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's Far Cry Blood Dragon. Hmm. It kind of reminds me a lot of the sort of chaos of that, but with edge shooting and this sprawling world to just go and play in. It's a big sandbox and it's a lot of fun. So what area were you in compared to, I mean, we've covered Rage a little bit in the past. Yep. So were you, did you, was it sort of open in front of you? Or yes, please? it was a massive okay. open world desert so I could go in any direction. So at some point I sort of stumbled on a petrol station which was covered in enemies who I then dispatched and there were certain things that I had to do there. And of course, like many sort of open world games, you have a kind of sense where you can then look around for those specific things. So I had to find petrol tankers to explore explode i started to shoot those more enemies descended but the more you found of those like info bits that you could find and petrol things that you could uh, explode and then there was also some kind of um upgrade stuff available as well so there's kind of chests with bits and by the end of rage i'm pretty sure you're going to be some kind of crazy terminator who will be unstoppable oh that sounds fantastic yeah uh, last question then when is it out rage 2 is out on may the 14th so we've got a bit of time to go lovely it sounds like the best kind of big dumb fun please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos about rage 2 when it does come out and if you are already subscribed don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when our next video goes live.